Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the York series. Sitting within North Yorkshire, York is a very historic place with 31 civil parishes within its city boundaries. Here's one of them for your enjoyment. Welcome back to the city of York, everybody. Now, normally there's no reason to see the inside of a residential property. However, here, I really do wish I could see the inside of this one. This is what it's called. Bowling House. Probably can't see it on that stone. Let's try this one. Bowling House. Now, the reason it's called Bowling House is because inside that house, there's a 55 foot long bowling alley because it used to be a bowling alley and it's been converted into a house it's one of the most unusual properties in britain and you'll find it in elvington Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Here's a York village I've been looking forward to covering. This is Elvington, which is around seven miles southeast of the city, located on the B1228 York to Howden Road. A riverside settlement, Elvington stands right next to the River Derwent, which forms part of the parish boundary with Sutton upon Derwent and the county boundary with the East Riding of Yorkshire. Much like many others along this eastern side of York, Elvington used to be in the East Riding, and if you've been following this series, I won't be needing to tell you the dates involved when it switched districts. The village is mentioned in the Doomsday Book, which makes a reference to a Norman church. In the village is Elvington Hall, a Grade II listed structure where the writer Laurence Stern would live for a time during his childhood. Roger Jacques and Simone Stern, his grandparents, controlled the manor before 1700. Elvington is one of the few York villages associated with the RAF. In 1942, RAF Elvington was built and it was used in the Second World War. It was vacated in 1958, and by 1986, parts of it were turned into the Yorkshire Air Museum. It gained notoriety in 2006 when the former Top Gear presenter, Richard Hammond, crashed a vampire jet car on one of its runways. It's a good one this, guys. Let's go for a walk. Beginning at the northern end of the main village, this is the entrance to Elvington Water Treatment Works. I promise the landmarks are going to get better than this. Let's get the formalities out of the way. Close by, on the end of Derwent Close, there's a parish notice board. 17 down, 14 left in York. There's also a bus stop here too. Elvington is served by the number 36 and X36, which run from York to places like Bealby and Everingham in the East Riding. So this is Main Street. Elvington is laid out along this one road primarily, although there are a couple of features, like its church for example, down some side streets. In the centre of Main Street is the Village Green, which I think is one of the best features Elvington has. We'll get a look at this a bit better later. But I should mention that there's a beck which skirts along its edge. This flows to the east into the River Derwent, and it's called Elvington Beck. 
beautiful village Elvington and if you like what you've seen so far well it's only going to get better. Let's head for the pub next. Here's number two, Blacksmith's Cottage, which is the unusual location for the Village War Memorial. It's a tablet set into its wall. While we're on the subject of both blacksmiths and memorials, part of the Queen Mother's Memorial in London was made by an Elvington blacksmith, Don Barker. Next door is the Grey Horse Inn, the village's one and only pub. A traditional inn dating back to the 17th century, this was originally called the Bay Horse. Almost directly opposite we have the phone box, not the easiest one to film because there's not really anywhere to stand, this one's a book exchange. Here's Elvington Village Store. Cyclists like this shop according to reviews. One even described walking into it like going back in time for all the right reasons. And then we have the Village Hall. Constructed in 1858, this was originally a school. It became the Village Hall in 1969 and was extensively altered in 1972. So after the Village Hall, this main road runs off towards Sutton-upon-Derwent and over the bridge into the East Riding of Yorkshire. We're not going to go all the way up there because I covered that in the Sutton-upon-Derwent episode and it's pointless covering it twice. In that I covered the lock and the bridge and all the floodplain area around the two villages. There's no need to talk about it again. However, I still do need to walk part of the way down there because there's a footpath on the right hand side which will take us to the church. The footpath takes us past Elvington Hall. It has Elizabethan origins and has some additions made by the architect John Carr in the 18th century. Its gardens were designed by Gertrude Jekyll, the very same who we spoke about on Holy Island. The path then crosses Elvington Beck again which has now got considerably wider. And it brings us into the churchyard at Holy Trinity. Little is known of a church here in the medieval period. What is known though is that it was out of repair in 1663 and again in 1744. Possibly by 1801 its condition was unrecoverable because the local reverend decided to build a new church rather than repair the old one. The new church opened in 1803 and was repaired in 1849 and again in 1868. It was then rebuilt on a site a little to the south in 1876. The new building in stone was designed by William White. The churchyard was extended in 1968 and among its features is this oddly shaped piece of stone. Okay so once out of the churchyard it's a right turn now. If, we, if you turn left you're heading down a dead end so there's no way I'm going down there because it doesn't lead to anywhere in particular. So it's the other way for us and we're heading for the green next. Now this is by far and away I think the best part of Elvington. On Church Lane we find a row of 13 mottled brick cottages dating from 1860. Scribbled away amongst these are some clues to Elvington's former chapels. Information on them is sketchy. The village had two, one Wesleyan and one primitive, the latter built in 1821. I suspect one was around the back of this house. And if you walk to the end of the row you'll find Chapel House which I reckon was built on the site of one of them. It looks too new to be the chapel itself. Now we're on the green and here's Halo Hair Studio. Open from Tuesday to Saturday, this caters for both ladies and gents as well as children too. When you look at this amazing village green, it's little wonder that Elvington was made a conservation area in 1990, is it? Also on the green is another local business, D.A. Oldfield. Founded in 1994, they supply equipment to the glass bottle making industry globally from this very workshop. Okay, this last part of the main walk takes us up a street that runs adjacent to the green, forms a little loop and goes back to the main road and then heads back up towards the school. So yeah, um, lovely village, let's see what else is in it to finish it off. Aside from the school which is at the end of the walk, the rest of our amble around Elvington is residential. 
This is Beckside, which has some of the newer properties in the village. I'm going to use this opportunity to mention Hugo Charteris, who died of cancer in 1970 at his home in the village. Charteris was born in London and was the author of nine novels, 17 television screenplays and numerous children's books and short stories. He was educated at Eton and in 1941 he left to join the Scots Guards. He was twice wounded in the war and received a military cross in Italy for defending his position against continuous enemy attack. He lived at the Grange in Elvington and you can find his grave in St Helen's Churchyard in nearby Skipwith. We've now arrived at the school located opposite the water treatment works. Not a bad little walk around that, but we ain't done yet. Okay, it's quite windy here, so apologies if you can't hear me. We're done with the main walk around Elvington Village, but we're not done with this one yet by a long way. To the west of Elvington, there's the site of the old Elvington Railway Station. So let's go and find that next. Beyond the school, there's an area that has a few more amenities. Off Elvington Lane is the village's surgery, seen here. Virtually next door is the Lower Derwent Sports and Social Club. Founded in 1999, Elvington Harriers Football Club play here. They're an FA Charter Standard Club with a range of teams covering under 7s through to under 15s. Their teams play in yellow shirts and blue shorts and compete in the Selby District League. A bit further up the road there's an industrial estate. Elvington actually has three distinct industrial areas and two of the biggest companies based on them are turf growers Rolorn and the Norwegian chemical company Yara. Where Yara is now located was originally the site of Elvington Railway Station. Between 1913 and 1926 it served passengers on the Derwent Valley Light Railway. The line was still open for freight traffic until 1973 but it's now been lifted. Now I know this is nothing to do with Elvington, but you might have heard a plane in the background of those last couple of shots. It's up there. I don't know what it is, but it ended up making a racket. Go to the loudest plane I've ever heard. Can you see it? Just about there-ish. It's very hard to see where it is. It's making a right noise. Subject of planes though, in this part of Elvington you can find an aircrew memorial and it's right behind me here. This remembers the French air crews during the Second World War. Part of it is written in French. Don't ask me to say what it says because I struggle enough with English without even trying to say anything in French. And the reason French air crews are remembered here is thanks to the former RAF Elvington, located to the west of the village. Originally a grass airfield, Elvington was the only airbase in the UK used by the Free French Forces. Two French squadrons, numbers 346 Guyenne and 347 Tunisie, both played a leading part in the bombing of Germany. Before the French came here, RAF squadron number 77 were stationed here and they left in 1944 as they were relocated to nearby RAF Full Sutton. Now if you are wondering about that house that was a bowling alley by the way, it was used by US troops who were stationed at RAF Elvington in the 1950s. The airbase is now the Yorkshire Air Museum, founded and first opened to the public in the mid-1980s. It has 49 aircraft and at least 20 other historic vehicles. It also has a permanent RAF Bomber Command exhibition that was opened by LIFE member Sir David Jason.
This is the Vampire Dragster, one of a pair built by Alan Bootsy Herridge in 1981, designed to be raced at the Santa Pod Raceway. The other was named Hellbender. It's a jet-propelled car that currently holds the outright British land speed record, 300.3 miles per hour, which was set on Elvington Airfield. In 2006, TV personality Richard Hammond drove it while filming footage for the BBC TV show Top Gear and suffered a near-fatal accident. He lost control of the car thanks to a blowout on its front right wheel. At the point of failure, the vampire was travelling in excess of 280 miles an hour. One of the safety parachutes did activate, but couldn't prevent the car from flipping over and over before digging into the grass at the runway's edge. It's been speculated that if Hammond was any taller, he would have been decapitated. In 2007, the damaged vehicle went up for sale as scrap on eBay, but it's since been fixed. I'm sure you know the one I'm talking about if you're a Top Gear fan. If you don't, well, go and look it up, but it's not for the faint of heart, I'll say that much. Anyway, that's been the parish of Elvington, and I do hope you have enjoyed it. It's another one down in York. Time for me to move on to my next one. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. Thank you.